Hello and welcome to How to Film Weddings. My name is John and today I'm going to be showing you my personal workflow for color grading wedding films in Premiere Pro. I also want to say that we just released a luxury LUT pack called Lux by How to Film Weddings and I will be using those LUTs today to color grade my footage. And the best part about all of this is that I was able to sit down with Kaylin from White and Reverie in Gamut and we walked through line by line every single detail of these LUTs to make them exactly perfect for me. A couple things to think about. Number one is these LUTs will work in any editing software that you might use for wedding films. And I'm talking Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro mainly. And I'm going to be editing in Premiere Pro, but these tools should be in your editor and easy to find. But the thing I wanna teach you or talk about today is just understanding how to color grade. And I don't have a super in-depth knowledge. I'm not a super geek when it comes to color correcting, but I know how to manipulate my footage in a way that is going to give me the desired colors that I want. And so I just wanna show you how easy it can be with the proper footage and the proper LUTs to give yourself a really great image. A couple of things to note before we get going is it is so much easier to edit good footage than it is to edit bad footage. And a couple of the things that I've changed in my workflow is adding an external monitor to my wedding day. I am filming on a camera that has a small HD7 connected to it so that I can see what it is that I'm filming. There's lots of tools on there to show me if I'm overexposed, if I'm in focus, and it lets me install a LUT to the film, to the footage that I'm taking so that I can see exactly what it's gonna be like when I bring it into my computer. I don't know about you, but a lot of times if you're using the little LCD monitor on the back of your camera, it looks great and then you bring it into your computer and you're like, what in the literal heck is going on? This looks nothing like what I filmed on the wedding day. My wedding is hot doo-doo garbage and I might as well quit. Well, don't do that. Let me show you what to do. And the other thing that a lot of people don't do is they, they shoot in a picture profile instead of in log. It is a more advanced thing to shoot in log, but you get a lot more out of your footage. And so by shooting in log, you're going to capture way more data, way more color, and it's going to be easier for you to manipulate and move your footage around in post to get it exactly where you want. So with those things in mind, let's hop in and start color grading some clips. Now I've found a few clips, just three or four here that I want to pull together for you and show you my process. The first thing that we need to do, this is log footage, so you can see how flat it looks. There's no shadows, there's no depth to the shadow, is we need to bring it back to a Rec. 709 space, and that's just a fancy way of saying we're taking it from log, looking all flat, to bring in contrast and shadows back into it, and color to get it to where it looks great so we can then add our creative LUTs on it. The way I do this in Premiere is I put an adjustment layer, I'm just grabbing a blank new adjustment layer, here and I'm just putting it where anything underneath here is going to be affected by the adjustment layer. So I've got my adjustment layer and what I'm gonna do, I've pre-installed my input LUTs to have Gamut's base LUT Sony S-Log3 LUT. So as soon as I add that, you can see that it has now added contrast, it's added some more life to the footage and you can see here that this is pretty good footage already. Um, so we've got some life here. Again, if you turn this off, that's what it did look like. That's what this is. The next thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and add my LUT. Some people, most people will go ahead and color grade the footage from here and then add the LUT. For me, it just has worked better. I don't know what it is. I'm probably wrong in making some of you scream, but this is my video about how I do it. And I've been getting lots of comments on my color lately. So just hold with me. Um, so again, adjustment layer here, it's affecting everything underneath it. So all these clips are affected by my adjustment layer. I've got my basic correction and then I have creative. And in here I have installed my Lux LUT pack. I've got LUT one, two, three, four, five, and my black and white. We're just gonna use LUT one for this film. But looking at this, I added this in here again, no creative LUT, creative LUT. Now you might say, well, John, that's really oversaturated. We did that on purpose so that different cameras could work with this LUT. For Sony S-Log footage, I actually bring it down to about 60 
Um, so I'll just go ahead and get it down to 60 real quick. And then that helps me to have the intensity where I want. Okay, so that's what I do with the adjustment layer before I lock it. I'm not trying to do any more adjustments into the adjustment layer. I want to go into each individual clip at this point. Now, to understand what I like to do with these clips is I need to scientifically be able to see what it is that I'm editing. Maybe you're editing in a room that has a window. Maybe you're editing in a room that has lights on it. Right now I have my camera light on. So my eyes are like playing tricks on me. And when Kaylin and I were building out this LUT, we had to like close our eyes, look away, and then look back at the screen and close our eyes and look away just because our eyes will play tricks on us. And one way to get around that is to actually understand the data to understand scientifically what is happening with the color data that is being put on your screen. And I didn't know you could do this for the longest time until I hired Chris Mai with GoodCo to do a, a tutorial for me to show me how to color grade because I loved his color so much. So in Lumetri scopes, the RGB scopes, I can see my reds, my greens, and my blues. A couple things to note here. This looks like the matrix a little bit, and after a while, you can kind of like get into this and feel like you, you're in the matrix. Anyway, as you can see, we've got red, green, and blue, and this image is actually made up of reds, greens, and blues. You've got your highlights of your image near the top, you got your mid-tones in the middle, and your shadows down at the bottom. A couple of notes, your IREs are over here, and this is just basically how dark or bright each of these colors are. I like to have my IREs somewhere around 95 to 98. I like to bump it a little brighter and the shadows around five, somewhere in there. And so when I'm manipulating each one of these clips, you can see they all change. There's different things for different clips. This is the data you can see as I'm moving that things are moving. So you can kind of see in this just a little bit of movement, but I'm not moving much with this clip. And so this clip is almost good. Like it's almost where I want it. It's bright like I like it. Some of the shadows aren't there. And so I'm gonna go into Lumetri and start messing with some of the basics just to show you what happens. If I bring up the brightness, yes, you can see that it looks like hot garbage, but you can also see that this is clipping. You can see how every color is clipping. So we don't like that. We don't want that. This is, again, this little area right here is gonna be this real bright white light. So I'm kind of looking at all this stuff. Like is all of this, you got like some reds over here. Those are, those are bright, but like, I like to bump it just a little bit for me. I like a little bit of a brighter, somewhere in there. So I'm not like clipping. This might be losing a tiny bit of detail, but my brightness is where I want it. And then I can either pull down blacks and shadows to get some dark, which I don't like to do. Or I like using the color wheels in you can manipulate the entire shadows, the entire midtones, or the entire highlights by pulling down here. So I can bring down all the shadows if I want to, all the midtones if I want to, and all the highlights. So I like to do a little bit of a mixture of this. I like to bring in some of the blacks, just kind of looking through here and some of the shadows and get it to where I like it, just by looking at the image and then coming over here and saying, okay, that's kind of where I want it. Just double checking. And so, I can pull in some more of the shadows if I want to. It starts to get a little contrasty. So somewhere in there is where I want. Now, I like this image how it is, but I just wanna show you, like right now the blues are not majorly in the highlights. This is on purpose. I like more reds in the highlights. I like a warmer highlight. I like this image to feel a little bit warmer in the highlights instead of cooler, warm, love, I don't know, blue, sad. To me, I just like having a little bit of warm. But if I can tell that the highlights over here look like they're low in the greens and low in the blues, I can literally pull my highlights towards those and it will even up the image. And I can get it where it's really green, which I don't like. Now I've clicked back and I can see, ooh, I like these colors. So if I wanted just a little less pink in there, I could then manipulate just a little bit. And now I'm getting an image that I really like. So as you can see, I'll go back in here and I'll show you what this looks like without the LUT and with the LUT. So I'll turn off my creative LUT. So the image there looks really pretty. And then by adding that LUT, it just adds that pop of color that I really like. And so depending on whatever LUT you have, whether it's this new LUT pack or something else, 
that is something to look at. I always turn the LUT back off afterwards just to kind of see, okay, that's where it was. Now, yep, this is, this is what I'm wanting. So a lot of these things are to your preference and to your style, but understanding highlights, midtones, and shadows is going to help you a ton. Okay, now let's move to this one. As you can see, there's a lot of blue tones. And if you look here, not bright enough, or dark enough, that's where I like to start with. My basic correction, I'm just trying to get this up to where I want it, somewhere in here. And then my shadows and blacks, I'm trying to get them down where I want. And just kind of looking just with that even, the more that I get here, the more contrasty we get here. So I'm not trying to add too many shadows, but this is kind of the starting place to just kind of get it a little bit to more where I want. Then I go into the color wheels in the shadow. Then I'm able to pull it up more into the warmer tones. And that's giving me, again, like just that little bit of difference to add a little bit of life to it. Again, that's the basic correction off of it, on, off, on. And you can see it's pretty even. And now we've got this image instead of that super blue image when we started. Okay, we're gonna move on to the final clip here. As you can see, I've added the LUT and it looks pretty great already. Just wanna make some fine tuned tweaks. So just as a reminder, we've got this open here. Show you what it looks like without the creative LUT. Looks okay, but boom, this makes it pop. The skin tones look better. The darks, everything, the shadows, everything is looking much better. So I just wanna go into my scopes and I wanna make sure I lock this. And as you can see, the shadows aren't super shadowy. So I wanna do, I wanna do that. I wanna bring in some more blacks just a little bit and some of the shadows. Obviously, if I bring too many in, it starts to get a little too dark and moody for me. I'm gonna bump this exposure just a little bit. And now I'm scrubbing through the whole image and seeing kind of looking at the scopes. Got a little bit of reds in the mid-tones maybe and the skin tones that I don't want. And I can do the whole mid-tones or I can show you this other tool, which is our vector scope YUV. And what this is gonna do without going super in depth, this sucker here is showing you skin tones. Your skin tones live right here, whether you're white, you're black, whatever you are, your skin tones are gonna live right here. And you can see this is, saying it's pushing yellow. One thing I want to do is I want to create a quick mask just to eliminate all the colors outside of the skin tone of the couple. And what I'm gonna do is I create an opacity mask and I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna zoom it way up into their face and only, only get skin tones for their faces. Let's see. Let's go there and then let's fit a little bit zoomed in just so we can see. Okay, we can see their faces. Okay, whoops. Okay, their faces are in the frame. Somewhere in there and then I can go back here and see and just double check that this is on the line. Couple things, if it's way to the red, way to the yellow, you can adjust, but the skin tones are actually kind of where I want them to be. That's like the, the final step I do is skin tones and just making sure that they are right here on this line. I just wanna show you what happens if I push towards the red. You can see it literally pushes the skin tones towards the red, that looks really bad. If I push towards the yellow, it's gonna push it way over here to the yellow. So you can literally just be showing the skin tones. Some of the stuff that's like off the fringe is going to be some of these things over here, but I can see the skin tone. The other thing I wanna do while I have this is I can actually bump the exposure to get their skin kind of where I want it. So that's kind of gonna be, you know, if I go here obviously, but just giving their skin a little more life that's going to be something I really want to do. Okay, now we go back to fit. Little bitty spot there, effects control. I'm going to delete this mask. And as you can see, it just works. Look at, look at this, look at that skin tone. Let's zoom in, whoops, wrong one. Zoom into this image. That to me is exactly what I want to look. And I'm able to see the image itself is exactly where I want it to be across the board. 
And it just makes me feel good to know this is exactly what I want. And so as you can see, let's go back here. This image right here, oh my gosh, that luxury LUT, look at this thing. I mean, this is absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning to me, and I wouldn't change anything from this. I'm so excited to share this with the couple. I've got my clips, and then I can pull all these together and know that they're exactly the colors that I want. So in conclusion, if you are shooting it right, if you are shooting it right in camera, if you have a monitor where you can see what you're doing, if you've installed your LUT into the monitor, if you're shooting in log and understand how to do that, and then you're bringing it into your computer and saying, okay, I wanna manipulate these colors. I know how to do this now. I know my scopes. I know how to mess with skin tones. You are going to be able to deliver when it comes to consistent colors in your films. One little caveat is that this works even if you didn't shoot in log. Like knowing if you've baked a picture profile in, maybe a Cinetone, something like that, you can still go in and manipulate these colors and get them where you want to go. It's just much easier for me shooting in log. So if this video was helpful for you, do me a favor, let me know in the comments, let me know where I messed up. I'm still learning. I do not think I know all this stuff. I've learned from people like Kaylin over at White and Reverie and Chris with Goodco and Blake the editor, and I'm continually taking steps to learn more about color grading. And as a reminder, these LUTs, as you can tell, are very pretty. They're very beautiful. If you're looking for a timeless, romantic, luxurious, Italian, beautiful LUT, you might check out Lux by How To Film Weddings. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you have questions or if you just wanna thrash me below, go for it. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. Tell me what I'm doing right. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, we'll see ya.